Coming up on Bondi Rescue. Ah! There's something nasty in the water. <laughs> Though one kid takes great pains to prove his toughness. That's the worst I've seen. Monster swells pound Bondi. It's joy for some. Yeah. Oh, no. Life and death for others. It's just got absolutely smashed. And lifeguards compete for the biggest wave of the season. Bondi, it's a beachgoer's paradise. But there's one type of visitor that can quickly spoil everyone's day. Blue bottles are a venomous jellyfish which can turn Bondi into a minefield. Also known as the Portuguese man of war, blue bottles sting more than 10,000 Australians every year. We got blue bottles coming in. Everyone handled in different way and uh, they're very painful for everyone. So put a sign up. And fingers crossed, nothing bad happened. Nine-year-old Ku Yong has been brought to the tower by Luke. There's no tried and true treatment, other than waiting for the venom to simply wear off. Ten minutes, five minutes, five, ten more minutes, it'll it'll go away. Thank you very much. Some stings are worse than others, just as some beachgoers have different pain thresholds. Being stung by a blue bottle hurts like hell. It's like a, a throbbing, stinging. I don't know what their purpose is in the marine life. You know, I think everyone hates them. Lifeguards apply antiseptic and send victims on their way. Go home, have a hot shower, keep moving. End of the day, no, it's painful, but it's not that bad, OK? But one boy arrives who has been in contact with something much more painful than a blue bottle. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, you're a special one. Come through. This seat's for you. A sea urchin is a little sea creature with all these little sparks that come off it and they kind of hide in the rock crevices. Yeah, very nasty. I couldn't believe how many sea urchins were in his foot. That's the worst I've seen. I went to jump off the jump rock and I came back and then the way he came to me over and we tried go. to stand up and I fell through a hole. And now all you have to do is be shot for the next 40 seconds. Terrible. Right. You look Worse like than a blue bottle. Sea urchin spikes carry toxin and are extremely brittle. Like needles of fine porcelain, they easily break, usually once they've penetrated the skin. What's your name, buddy? Cameron. Cameron, I'm Harrison. I'm your surgeon for today. Jesse and Harrison start the delicate operation, removing the spines one at a time. Yeah. Oh, that one. These are real tricky because they're so small, and poor Cameron here, once he steps in them, um, they just snap off. It's just, yeah, tweezers, you only hope. Otherwise, you might have to go to the medical centre and try and get them out. The little warrior took it on, mate. He was like a little soldier. He, he didn't complain once about pain, and... Mate, I, at one stage, I was digging into his foot. Oh, look at that one. That one, mate, that's that's the, that's 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 the that was the biggest one in there. You right? I feel so sorry doing that to Cameron because he was in a lot of pain, but we just had to get them out as best, you know, as quick as we can. I'm pretty positive I've got all of them out. Thank you. Jesse and Harrison have taken 45 minutes to remove all the spines from Cameron's foot. Good work, mate. You're an absolute legend. It's like nothing else you've ever felt before, like miniature knives just going into your foot and then when they're pulling them out, just like someone's just pushing them in even deeper. Huge swells hit Bondi three or four times a summer. They're generated by storm systems and keep most people out of the water. But all it takes for an emergency situation is one swimmer to underestimate the waves and overestimate their ability. It was a big day at the beach. Surf was eight foot, getting towards the end of the day, and there was nobody down in North Bondi at all, so I just went and sat in the corner. Somebody came up to me and said that a lady had drifted right out, and I actually didn't even see you go out. The north corner is really dangerous, you know, when there's big surf. So Singlet and I were racing down the Rhino, you know, full speed, knowing that anything can happen, and the sooner we get there, you know, the quicker we can respond to the patient. Mate, 
with this big swell, it just pushes out that north corner. There was a lot of surfers in the water that afternoon, and I was asking where she'd gone. They pointed me in the right direction, and sure enough, she'd drifted 100 metres up the beach and was in need of help. A surfer keeps the woman afloat with his board until Chapo arrives. When they're so big, it's usually only surfers in the water. And to see a, a middle-aged woman is unusual in big stuff. And, yeah, she was definitely out of the league, and she was basically not the type of person you'd expect to be out and surf that big. You know, when the surf's big, it's, it's a lot more serious. You've got to be a lot more careful, because if something goes wrong, then you're in the big stuff. I was really concerned. I knew Chapo was going to struggle to get this girl in. It was a really difficult, really difficult rescue. All right, Chapo's just sneaking into the impact zone. Hey, boys, just watch him here. It's really nasty, that impact zone. Yeah, Dino, I've got the eyes on it, mate. Um, it is pretty heavy in there. The impact zone is the area where the waves break. Chapo hopes for a lull in the swell as he paddles in. Unfortunately, the ocean's very unpredictable, and the big swells did arrive right when Chapo didn't need them to. He's going to get a set on his head in a minute. We were confronted with a big wave just about to land right on us. And she just bailed out and dove under the wave. Oh, no. She just got absolutely smashed. Chapo has rescued a swimmer in huge swell. He hopes for a brief lull in the waves. Instead, a six-foot set looms. Oh, no. She just got absolutely smashed. Being hit by a big wave right in that impact zone sort of feels like you're in a washing machine. It throws you round and round. You can't see anything. It's dark. You don't know which way's up. As the white wash settles, Chapo and the patient can't be seen. Harrison uses the rip running along the rocks to get out as fast as possible. I'm on the binoculars waiting to see two heads. I want to see two people hop up. I want to make sure they're all right. Finally, Chapo and the woman are spotted. And there I am with this, this lady. I've got a couple more sets to deal with and I've got no board, so... It wasn't the ideal situation to be in. A panicked patient could potentially drown a lifeguard in that situation in the impact zone as they're trying to get some air to breathe, a survival reflex. So we want to get some help, and Chapo would want to keep the patient calm. Two important things. I was having a few words to her, just telling her to stay calm, you're fine, you're keeping your head above water, you're going to be OK. Harrison reaches Chapo and the woman and quickly gets her onto the board. I was very fortunate to catch a runner back to the beach and once she's on that wave, she kind of realised she's out of that tricky situation. We kind of knew we were out of that tricky situation as well, so she's, she had a smile on her face, she's, you know, she had a bed and once she got on that sand, I think she was very happy. I don't do many rescues like that where we're just swimming in and it's just about keeping the patient calm. I know better, normally I don't go when it's like that. But today, I, I, I just need to swim and I went. I should have been. I'm going to go into the pool now. Lifeguards must be confident in big seas. Boys. Hey, how's hey, good? How are you? Good to see you again. Yeah. To improve their skills, today, big wave legend and former lifeguard Jamie Mitchell has come to lead an underwater training exercise. Jamie knows how it feels to be held under by a massive wave. Staying calm and saving his oxygen he's able to tackle some of the biggest waves on the planet. Yeah, Jamie Mitchell came down to a big wave surfer, pretty well known, so he came down here to teach us some breath holding techniques and, and run the boys through a training session. Yeah, the big thing everyone thinks it's more physical than uh, mental, but I think it's more mental. You know, being underwater is, you know, a pretty scary place, and, uh, you know, being able to, you know, have your mind, you know, be at ease and be mentally, um, you know, relaxed is probably the biggest key that... Hopefully that's what we'll learn out there today. We all just went out to the boat ramp to Ben Buckler and got briefed on what we had to do. We've grabbed two big rocks and so we're going to do some like uh, underwater rock running and really it's just to get the guys um, to feel what it's like to be sort of under duress underwater. 
The aim of the exercise is to dive down in pairs, retrieve a rock, and travel underwater further than your opponent. Dino absolutely killed it out there. He would just never stop. We actually lost sight of him. Dino probably went about 55 metres underwater. No one had any idea where he was. He just disappeared. Now we got two trainees get up. The most anticipated matchup is between Bondi's two trainees. Me and Jethro, the young, young boys, the new boys on the block, were paired up together. I guess I did fancy my chances a little bit. Glit was, Glit was confident too, I could see it in his eyes. Boys are ready. All the boys are watching. Three, two, one. Ah. Lifeguards are doing... Lifeguards are doing underwater... Tra the goal is simple. Carry a rock underwater further than your opponent can. It's time for new trainees Jethro and Glick to face off in front of Jamie and senior lifeguards. Boys, are ready? Let's go. All the boys are watching. Three, two, one. Go. Go. The two rookies are competing for a full-time lifeguard position at the end of their traineeship. I picked it up and I took the lead, so I couldn't see Glick anywhere. I was like, just thinking, yeah, I'm winning. It was really tough down there. I let all my air out at one point and I was ready to come back up. And then I looked at Jethro and I'm like, no, nah, not happening. <laughs> yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. I could hear everyone on the surface going, eh, just yelling like faintly. And I thought that cheering meant the glit come up and I was winning. <laughs> and then I, I kept going for a little bit and then I thought, why well, push it up one? <laughs> ran, <laughs> ran straight past me and I lost. <laughs> Disappointed. <laughs> oh, steroid toys win! Yeah. It just took all the glory. <laughs> oh, heavy. Everyone had a pretty good crack. The two, two young guys had a good dig, and Glick came up trumped. Jeffro's asked for a drug test. His performance in answers, but I'm clean your own fun, Yeah, Glick, mate. Calling you out for a rematch. 1v1. Let's go. <laughs> Dino just called from Bronny. It looks like he might have something in the nets around there. So I'm taking the young expendable one, the young Glicky. <laughs> First that last time, mate. <laughs> South African-born Anthony Glick has been working hard to make an impression as a trainee lifeguard. But today, his fear of sharks is being tested. Now, we had a lifesaver come in and report that the one of the shark nets had been pulled down and he was pretty sure that there was something in the net. Boxy thought it was a, a good test for me to get out there in the middle of the ocean and check out the shark nets for the first time, which I hadn't actually done ever before. To get to Bronte, lifeguards must travel across open water that is known for sharks. It was pretty daunting knowing that you're gonna go out there, dive down to, in the middle of the ocean, check the shark nets. I realized that I was gonna have to, at some point, jump off the jet ski and get in the middle of the ocean right next to where uh, apparently there was a shark lurking, so. Um, I was getting pretty nervous at this point. You got your goggles? Yeah, buddy. You ready to launch? Yeah, mate. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared. Kerbox scans the area before sending Glick in. Right up. In. Head first? Head first, brother. Only one way to do it. <laughs> he dived in and he still had his feet attached to the back of the sled. <laughs> Get down there. <laughs> he was trying to tell me that it was because he had the, the life jacket on, but I don't know about that one. I drifted away from him and he's come up and I wasn't even near him. He's, he started yelling out to me, Get back here. And uh, I think that's when I realised he was actually terrified. <laughs> Yeah, he found it pretty funny. <laughs> Don't scare me like that again! <laughs> I thought it was pretty funny because Boxy's laugh is pretty catchy, I'm not going to lie. Um, so <laughs> he kind of made me a little bit more comfortable in that situation. The question still remains, is there a shark caught in the net? I see you not. It's either really heavy or there's something. <laughs> I could feel something dragging 
up and down, pretty heavy. Um, and so I immediately assumed there could be something flapping its tail in the shark nets. Kerbos and trainee Anthony Glick are responding to a report that something is caught in the shark nets. I see you not. It's either really heavy or there's something on you. <laughs> I could feel something dragging up and down, pretty heavy. Um, and so I immediately assumed there could be something flapping its tail in the shark nets. It's just an anchor. <laughs> Is that an anchor? Yeah, there's no nets. Over here. Checking the nets was pretty damn awesome. I jumped a bit out of my comfort zone, but I think I did a good job considering I've never been exposed to that before. The trip back made it worth it tenfold because we got to see a bunch of dolphins pop up right beside us on our way back to Bondi. It was awesome. They were right next to us, and it was a nice treat. Let's go and have a bit of fun. An intense weather pattern up north is sending 10 to 15 foot swell towards Bondi's northern headland, Ben Buckler. Most people stay clear, but lifeguards see a rare opportunity to practice their skills. A few of the young guys were off on the day. I sent a group message around to try and rally up a few troops to get out there and get amongst it. All the young blokes are jumping out of this game. We're going to get them out there. And a lot of them haven't been out when it's been big out here before, especially at the point. Oh, good. I'm excited. Yeah, very excited. I just want to get a bomb, show the boys have got a bit to go. I just really want to see someone get smoked. The big waves get gets the blood pumping, a bit of adrenaline. This is, this is what I really love. This is the best part of the job. Riding big waves is the best adrenaline rush in the world. The session starts with a massive wipeout. And trainee Glick riding the biggest wave he's ever caught. Who was that? A ball that went up the storm? Yeah, someone's still on it. That was killing me not being out there because the boys were getting bombed. The boys were charging out there. The usuals were always going, you know, Maxi, Gerbox. Whippet was out there on his surfboard. Dino was charging. And, you know, it was good to see the young guys out there, Glick and uh, Jeffro, they were getting a few too. It felt a little bit bumpy, but then seeing footage after, you realise how, how much you're flying through the air. Yeah, we're out there to have fun, but we definitely had a lot to prove out there. Man, yeah, Glick. Jethro, you can see the mop. Glick beat fellow trainee Jethro in the underwater challenge, but today, it's all Jethro. Jethro's showing him how it's done. Jethro's going to get this one all the way through. Jethro's the man of the match. The swell continues to build, and more lifeguards head out, hoping to catch the wave of the day. We knew there was that elusive bomb set somewhere. Everyone's goal was the same, and it was just to get that wave, that wave of the day, the bomb. This big birth had come through, wrapped around that uh, point like no tomorrow. So this guy just popped out of the middle of nowhere and just caught the wave of the day and we were like, what? Like, what's going on? Like, who is this? Did a bit of a head count out there. I knew it wasn't Jeff, I knew it wasn't Glick. Definitely wasn't Kerbox. <laughs> wasn't me. It turns out the mystery man is the producer of Bondi Rescue, Ben Davies. <laughs> Benny Davies. <laughs> Benny Davies. Well, that one, you just come out of nowhere and <laughs> Next time on Bondo Rescue, Santa's limelight is stolen by a couple of furry friends. Merry Christmas! Lifeguards and lifesavers race each other for the same rescue. It wasn't just about getting there before him. It was a serious incident. I had to get there as quick as I could. And Matt D sets a Christmas challenge too good to refuse. You can finish them? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>